Hey everyone, I'm Sophia LaFrance with Galvanize. I'm excited to be part of the Who Not Do Galvanize series. My interview is with Rachel Joy Barbeau. You may know her as the first female host for Sirium XM College Channels, a college football playoff host, a Heisman Trophy voter, and founder of the platform I'm Changing the Narrative. But in this interview, you get a behind the scenes look beyond the name. Late last year, you made the decision to retire as a sportscaster to focus on your platform changing the narrative. Given everything that's happening this year, was it the best time to make that change or the most challenging time to make that change? Woo, that is a good question. You just came out of the gate with the greatest question because <laughs> it's the one that I have often asked myself. And as a believer, um, I have often looked up at God and said, are you sure, God? Are you sure you said October of 2019? Are you sure? Um, and, and, you know, I think that's human nature to, to question God because we are flesh and blood, right? And so um, I believe, truly, Sophia, I believe that the most growth doesn't, it doesn't come from the mountaintop. It comes from the valley, right? The growth comes from when you've been kicked down, knocked down, beat down, whatever it is, covid recession, what, whatever, is, whatever is going on in your life, that's where the most, most growth comes from. So I would say it's been the most challenging decision because I decided to do this full time, had this full slate in April, was going out. Like I had probably eight or 10 engagements in April alone, busy summer, busy fall. And you know, that went to a pause because you can't speak to people live. But I know that people need this now more than ever. The stuff that we were talking about before, interpersonal relationships, mental health, self-care, self-love, true purpose, finding what sets your soul on fire and running towards it with everything they got, all those things, like breaking cycles of abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, substance abuse, all the things that we were focused on before, they've been heightened because of COVID, right? Like big time. So I know that I'm needed now more than ever. Faith plays such a major part of your life. And for me, I've been really leaning on God throughout this period of uncertainty. How have you felt God shine in the midst of these challenging times? Mm -hmm. <laughs> such a beautiful, loaded question. Um, I'm going to cry, I feel like. Uh, he, you know, in, in everything, he's my best friend. Um, and I, I tell people this all the time. I said, it's not religion, it's a relationship. I get up in the morning talking to him. I'm talking to him in the middle of the day. He's my Abba father, my provider, my protector, my husband, my, all, you know, he's, he's, he's just everything to me. And, and for me, I've seen him during the pandemic. I've seen him through people even more so, right? Like through the kindness of people through, I lost my mom a, a year ago this May and she was my best friend. And I've seen him in the circling of women around me who will never be my mother, but are shades of my mother. And they just loved on me and mothered me in different ways. And I think I see him, I don't think, I know, I see him in the faces of my kings and queens and people I've touched that, that come back and say, and it's, it's oftentimes when just the moment where I'm getting discouraged, like, really, God, like, I'm hitting a dead end here. What do I do? And then somebody will call or somebody will text or somebody will reach out and they'll say, you changed my life. I was never the same because of you. And that to me is my go juice. That's like everything I need to keep going. I have a platform, Empower to Succeed. And right now we're focusing on your metamorphosis, which is basically your transformation of accepting your authenticity. Was there a specific moment or moments in your life when you felt you had your metamorphosis in which you just fully embraced your authenticity? Um, ooh, that is good. That's a good one because I don't know. I know a lot of, of young women um, deal with this because I started speaking to Queens about a year and a half in. And what I tell Queens is the world tells you you're not enough or that you're too much. You're, you're, you're too short, too tall, too skinny, too fat, too this, too that. And I'm here to tell you, you are enough, right? You are perfect just the way you are. I spent half my life I'm trying to, being told to tone down my Latina-ness, being told to tone, you know, wear more neutral colors, be less vivacious, be, you know, and, and there was a moment, a girlfriend, I remember her name's Linda, and she said to me, um, she was like, no, be you, be you in all your glory, Rachel, the world needs you. And so um, 
growing up, and it wasn't my family, but people told you, you know, girls, we often get bossy, you know, we get, um, uh, and I don't know why we're bossy when we talk a lot, or we're demonstrative, and yet a male is, those, those traits are celebrated in him, but um, it was around that time, yeah, I said, wow, yeah, I'm, I'm meant to be who I am in all my glory. So you said in an interview that if you die tomorrow in 30 years, you did not want to remember it as being a Heisman voter. You wanted to be remembered by the legacy that you leave with the players and the athletes who are changing the narrative. When did you understand the difference between who you are versus what you do? Mm. Mm. That's such a great question. Um, and, and it's always, it's, it's for me, I think it's been a, um, a trickle in my soul, a, 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 just a, um, a tickle, a trickle, whatever you want to call it, of, of just, even since I was younger, going, there's more. I was meant to do more. I was meant to leave a legacy. I was meant, you know, and, 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 and even when I was a sportscaster for 17 years, I, it's not just about the story. It's about helping people tell their story, right? And doing it in a, in a beautiful, respectful um, manner. And, and so for me, I, I think I've kind of always known, but then the knowing became stronger and the knowing became um, so loud, like a reverberation in my ear. And, and I, I just, through the life that I've lived, I've seen how precious life is and, and how short it can be. And we are not promised another day. And so for me, I just said, you know what? Um, I want to affect people. And if I died tomorrow in 30 years, as you mentioned, I want people to say she, she affected my life. She loved me. She poured into me. Um, she gave of herself. And, and so for me, that, that's everything. And it's why it's really interesting you asked that question. I've been thinking about it a lot with the death of my mother. Um, if something happened to me, Sophia, what, what, would, um, what would happen to the movement? And so one of the things I've been doing at these 40 colleges all over the country for the last four years is I'll help. Uh, different athletes, I'll help them learn how to be public speaker and how to blend their story with the I'm changing the narrative tenets, purpose, passion, platform, interpersonal relationships, being a king or a queen or royal every day of your life, mental health, self-care. And then I help them get speaking gigs and help them go into schools. And so I said, why not do this on a bigger scale? So hopefully by the end of 2020, our plan is to start a speaker bureau for I'm changing the narrative to teach athletes and non-athletes, everyday folks, um, how to be a public speaker, how to blend their story with I'm changing the narrative. And so we end up having an army of people that go out all over the world and tell their stories and affect and change more lives. Because one of the things we say in the movement is, it's not about me. You're going through so many changes in your life. Uh, you changed careers, you've moved, uh, you lost your mom, you have, you're in love. Uh, if I took a snapshot of who you are at this moment in your evolving life, what would it show me? A very um, fractured yet beautiful soul. I think out of some of the greatest hurt and the greatest pain, I just made a post the other day about pain and joy being simultaneously within somebody, within a memory, within a place, right? Um, I think those two things can live there and I think they, they have their, their purpose. Each has their purpose. Um, I was just telling my fiance the other day, I said, you know, um, we were talking about, you know, will you change? Well, yes, of course I've changed. You know, I, I lost my mother and I will never be the same, you know, to the day I leave this earth and, um, and I'll live with it every day. And so my hope is that in my pain, you see me, um, you see me living, you see me fighting, you see my joy, that my smiles become extra beautiful and extra radiant because you know how much I'm fighting to do that. Um, so I think, I finally come to this like this realization and this peace with myself that there's so many parts of me that I'm so deep um, and that I've known great loss. And because I've known great loss, um, it makes me, my soul extraordinarily beautiful because in times of loss, instead of making it, letting it make me bitter, it's made me better. And, uh, and for me, I hope people see the warrior spirit in me. I hope people see my kindness and my joy. Well, Rachel Joy Barbo, I am such a fan of what you do, but now I'm even a bigger fan of who you are. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.